Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. In this video, I'm going to continue my series on matrices. And after engaging with the content in this video, you'll be able to successfully compute the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix. Hope you enjoy. One way, one way of calculating the inverse of a given square matrix, say 3 by 3, that's as complicated as we'll get is to use operations called row reduction. And essentially, you augment this matrix C with the identity matrix. OK, so and then you, you perform operations called row reduction, right? So oh, by the way, so there, there is quite a lot. Or have I left another page? Yes, OK, that's all right then. So consider the augmented matrix C augmented with the identity matrix. So sort of C and then next to it on the right is the identity matrix. Let me write that out. Okay, so the idea for this row reduction type uh, method is to basically take rows and add multiples of that row to other rows in such a way that you end up with the identity on the left hand side, so where C is now the, of that augmented matrix, you want to get the identity matrix. And the idea is on the other side, where I is now, you'll get the inverse matrix. OK? So how do we do it? Well, it is rather um, formulaic. Essentially, you want to try to get this top number to a 1, and then work down below it to get zeros. OK? Then you want to get this entry to a 1 and get the entries below that to a 0. Okay. Then you want to get this bottom right hand entry to a 1. Okay. And then sort of go back and get all the other zeros that you're missing. Okay. So let's um, have a look at that and see how we do it. Okay. So firstly, this isn't a 1 and there's no 1s below it. By the way, I can interchange rows and I'm still not going to... Um, I'll alter the underlying structure. So if you look down the first column, 2, 3, 2, if there was a 1 in there, what you'd do is you'd take the row that that 1's in and shift it up to the top. But we don't have that luxury at the moment. So how can we make this a 1? Well, let's take that row, that first row, and multiply it by something that gives us 1 in the first instance, so minus 1 half. OK? So to signify that, I make a little note going, all right, I'm taking the existing row 1 and I'm multiplying it by positive uh, 1 half. OK, so the, the other entries are unchanged. OK. All right, so now I've got that, that 1. What I would like to do is make all the entries below it in the, in the same column zeros. So how can I get that 3 to a 0? Well, I can take three lots of the first row away from the second row. And the two, the two down here can be made into a 0 just by taking two lots of the first row away from the third row. So let's do that and make a little note. Ah, sorry. So that's row 2 minus 3 row 1. And so for this one, I'm going to take away two times 
row one. Okay, so th these are both going to become zero. And now all I need to do is work out, all right, well, that minus three times negative one. Okay, so I'm actually going to be adding there, I'll get two. That minus three times negative one, so I'm adding there, I'll get five. And if I continue this on, I'll get the following. Okay, so two, take away two times negative one, so I'll be adding there, four, three, take away two times negative one, I'll be adding again, and similarly on the right hand side. Okay, so now I've got my zeros in that uh, first column. My next challenge is to make this two into a one, so I can just take this existing row, multiply the whole thing by one half. Okay, so so I'm going to get something like uh, one five on two minus three on four one half zero, and the rest is unchanged. Sorry, that should be a zero. Hang on. Sorry, zero, four, five, minus one. Okay. So now what? Well, I want to make this a zero now. So I'll take four lots of row two away from row three. Okay? Okay? So almost there. I can, you know, I could go back and make this a zero if I wanted to, but I'm actually going to get this minus five to a positive one. So how can I do that? Well, multiply the third row by negative one fifth. So as you can see, on the right hand side, I've got something that's very far now from what we started with. Okay. So what we're doing is basically step by step, we're forming this inverse matrix. See if I can squeeze it in. So this will become one. I just need to multiply these other things by negative one fifth. Okay, so I think I've squashed it in there. Okay, so we're getting there. What we can do now is just sort of work backwards, get this to a zero get this to a zero and get this to a zero. Okay? So how can we do that? Well, if I want, you know, there, there's various ways you can do that, right? So if I add row two to row one, this is going to disappear. Okay? So, So we're going to get there. We're going to get one, zero. Hang on. Hang on. 
second. Yep. Row one plus row two. Okay. So this will end up being something like three on two. Okay, the rest doesn't change. And we're just adding these things up here. Okay, so according to my calculations, this is what you'll get. Okay, so we're almost there now. All we need to do is get these two entries to a zero. So I can do that just by adding in multiples of the third row to the second row and the first row. Okay, so what I'll do is in, I'd add three on two times, uh, sorry, I'd take away three on two times the third row from the first row and five on two times the third row from the second row. So let's do that in one go. And you'll get the following. So here, these things are going to cancel out. And lo and behold, we've got our, in, in, uh, our identity matrix on the left-hand side. So what are we going to get on the right-hand side? Well, with a, a little bit of care, you should end up with the following. Okay, so this right-hand side then is the inverse of your matrix A. Okay, so how do you know if you're right or not? Well, you can check. I'm not going to do it, but you can check... just by working out the two products. Now, the inverse matrix is unique. There's one and only one inverse of a matrix. If it has, a ma if it has an inverse, there's only one of them. OK, so if you calculate the inverse matrix and your mate calculates the inverse matrix and you get different answers, well, there's something wrong. OK, there's something wrong. OK, they could be equivalent, equivalently sort of or equivalent to each other, but yeah, if they're wildly different, then there's something wrong. Now, as you can see, this is a long process. Okay? So it would be unlikely, it would be unlikely that we'd give you anything like row reduction of a 3 by 3 matrix in an exam. Okay? More likely, what you'd be given is something like Oh, here is the, you know, here's the inverse matrix, or here's the other, here's, here's the inverse matrix of something. It's just given to you. But for two by two, we would expect you to be able to quickly calculate the inverse, especially when you're dealing with systems of ODEs, as we'll see. Okay?